And here we are again. This makes two weekends in a row that it's raining. I'm not even sure why that bothers me that it's on a weekend because time seems to have no relevance anymore. Weekend, weekday, what's the difference? At any rate, I wanna get started on my next project. I wanna show you guys how to make a teeny tiny little box. It's like a little keepsake box, but it has a really cool way of making the lid so that everything fits perfectly. You'll need a router table in order to do this, and of course your table saw to cut the wood. Here's some scraps of exotic wood that I've been saving for something special. I really like the lace wood, that looks really cool, but that I think would just be too small. It's not wide enough for what I want to do. And this is just strips of walnut. Here's a piece of walnut that would work out pretty well. But I really like this, this like wavy kind of wood. I think, I think it's rosewood, but I don't remember. I've had this for a long, long time. What I want to do with this is split it in the middle. And that's one of the most important things to think about when making really small pieces is that a uh, standard three quarter inch thick piece of wood looks really, really chunky when you're making something tiny. So the thinner you can make that wood, the better. If you have a planer, you can get it as thin as you want, but something like this, it should you should be able to just resaw that on your table saw or on a bandsaw if you have one. I might just use this piece that I've already cut down real thin I'm not sure what this kind of wood is, but I don't know if I have enough of it. I need to go and continue working on my plans. Remember, I make plans for even the most basic projects, so I wanna make up a cut list and just see how much wood I need for a three inch by three inch box. Oh, but man, that wood looks nice. And the other thing to think about when making tiny projects is the level of precision required kind of ramps up because any tiny errors will just be magnified. If you're making, you know, a house, an eighth of an inch makes really little or no difference. But if you're building a three inch box, that eighth inch is huge. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure your tools are all calibrated and accurate and that you can get good cuts on them. Here's what the box looks like in SketchUp. I've just kind of color coded it so you can tell the different components here. So the lid raises up like this and it's got this lip all the way around it and that's the piece that will hold the lid in place and that can be adjusted to make it as tight or as loose as you want and so what i'm doing now is kind of making up a real basic cut list this is really just for myself so i just take all six sides of the box and just laid them out in a single plane here and then i can just use a measuring tool and measure how long of a board I need. And so it's gonna mean around 18 inches. So I think I have enough if I split that board into, I'll have to go out and measure it. But I also wanted to show you how this lid works is that you make these pieces each side as one piece. So here's the one side here. And then what I'll do is I'll route out the inside of all of these pieces first, I'll assemble the box, and then once the box is assembled, I'll route out this side just to where these two pieces kind of come apart. And then the whole lid will just slide down in to place like that. I actually made one of these boxes 11 years ago on my channel. Yeah, well that was scary to look at. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna start to look that gray again if I can't get back to my hairstylist here pretty soon. I'll see if I can resaw this by cutting it halfway through the board and then flipping it around and cutting it the other half. I've got a feather board in place to help keep it pressed to the fence. Holy crap, look at the inside of this wood. You ready for this? I was not expecting that. I guess this is just like, you know, aged on the outside, but wow. Well, let's see if I can get the outside of these boards to look like that inside. So what I need to do is install a quarter inch straight bit in my router.
Here's where some of that precision starts to come into play. I need that router bit to cut halfway through this thickness of this wood and it really needs to be as exact as I can get it. So you really need to run some sort of a test on this before committing to your actual boards. Unfortunately, this is all I have and I can only spare about that much. So hopefully this will be enough that I can run a couple tests on. At least I can run a test this way and then I can run a test on the other side if I need to. This is gonna be the cut that's on the inside of the box. Now I'll flip it over and cut through the other side. Hopefully it doesn't cut all the way through, but just really close. And unfortunately that is cutting completely through there. So I'm gonna stop it here and I'm, that just means that that bit is too high. I actually thought I was being pretty conservative with that, but let me lower it down a little. Okay, that was better, but I think I, whoops. That was better, but I lowered it too far. This is where I wanted to start with to begin with. So what I'm gonna do is make my next test on this edge. I'll keep that set as it is, and hopefully this time I can just raise it slightly each time. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. You can start to see where it's cutting through almost completely. It's almost translucent. You can see through it some of the fibers of the wood are breaking through there. So all I need to do is raise it just a hair higher so that I'll know it'll be cutting completely through. If you make this cut too deep, the lid of the box will be loose. If you left it like this, it might be a little bit tight. So you wanna raise it up just a little bit more so that it cuts barely through there. So that was just enough to cause this to separate. I hope this is making sense. Disregard this groove there. That was my first test that was way too deep. So now I just need to reset my fence. This distance can be whatever you want it to be. I just prefer to have a pretty thin lid to the box. But if you wanted to make it thicker, you could make it half the thickness of the box or whatever. I was able to sand down and get this side looking pretty good, but it still doesn't quite look as good as this side. So I'm gonna make sure this is the outside of the box. This will be the inside. This inside is the piece that I wanna cut first, and I'm just gonna make one groove all the way across. Now what I wanna do is push my fence back to make the outside cut on the box. I'm not gonna make this cut until the box is assembled, but I wanna set it up now. I hope you can see this. This is the notch or the groove right here. So I'm gonna slide my fence back to where the next cut is gonna cut on that outside of the box, and I need this part, this side, of the bit to cut just barely into that groove. So it should cause them to separate, but not so much that it's like way up here. You want it to be as close as possible. Then I'll set my table saw blade to a 45 degree angle. This is gonna be easier to cut these with my miter saw on the right side here. So I'll make my first cut on the edge. Now I can glue these four pieces together. What I want to do is figure out what order to put them in. So I wanna to try to make it so that the grain all kind of follows itself. It looks like these are out of order. And you know, you can kind of 
Looks like those go together there. That doesn't seem quite right. I don't know if that's right. Either. Oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe this goes over here. Ooh, there we go. That's it. Okay. <laughs> so there's the order that all of this grain runs through. Obviously, when this one meets up with this one, it's going to be a little odd, but all of these will look nice together. So I should be able to clamp this together using rubber bands. Something this small doesn't really require much clamping pressure. There's something about working on really small projects that I find very satisfying. Anyways, I'm gonna let that dry overnight and then I'll come back in the morning and finish it up.